It's finally time. I'm learning a new piece. I know, it's been a while, but I'm still here and I'm still practicing most days. Lately, I've been working on a lot of fast pieces to try to improve my dexterity and agility, but I want to switch things up a bit and work on something a bit slower. One of my students asked me recently if I know how to play Moonlight Sonata, and I had to embarrassingly tell him no. It's such a well-known piece, and I'm surprised I never learned it before, so why not give it a shot? I'm going to be learning movement one. It's only three pages long, so I'm hoping I can learn all the notes in a week. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I'll try to do some periodic check-ins, but it's going to be way too boring to watch me learn all of this, so here's a montage. All right, I did it. It's been one week and I learned all of the notes. It really wasn't too bad. The last page ended up being mostly a repeat of the beginning anyways, so it didn't take me as long as I thought. Challenges, I would say tension in the hand. There's a lot of voicing in chords and octaves, so when you're putting more weight on certain fingers, it's naturally going to create a lot of tension. So I just had to be extra conscious of relaxing my hands after playing those chords. The next step is my favorite part, interpretation and phrasing. I'm going to try to be a bit cautious with how much rubato I use as this isn't romantic music, so I don't want to overdo it and risk making it sound cheesy. Plus, this piece already has such great presence to it that I don't think it needs too much anyway. The name Moonlight Sonata was actually not chosen by Beethoven. It was given this nickname by a critic after Beethoven's death, so we don't actually know if it was Beethoven's intention to paint this moonlit scene. What we do know is that he dedicated this piece to his student and lover. Beethoven proposed to her, but her father forbade her from marrying him because he didn't have a rank very Game of Thrones stuff. So perhaps this piece is more about 
forbidden love than it is about the moon. I'm definitely going to keep those emotions in mind as I'm working on the interpretation. The hard part will be deciding how I want to phrase things because there's so many different possibilities. Even with just that opening melody, there's so many different ways you can play it, so how do you decide? I don't know, I probably shouldn't think about it too much and just let the music lead me. I spent a good amount of time working out how much rubato I wanted to use in these moments. Taking a bit of breath between the measures helps bring out a cantabile quality, in my opinion, and gives the listener a sense of where the phrases begin and end. Here, I wanted to create a call and answer type effect, where the first phrase is a bit louder and the following phrase gets echoed back a bit softer. When I have trouble phrasing something like this, I find singing it really helps. I'm a terrible singer, but it allows me to hear what my brain is imagining. This section is really interesting. There's clearly a building of emotional tension happening, then it resolves itself in the reprise. We can bring that out using dynamics or tempo. I think I'm going to use a combination of both. Bringing us back to this opening melody again creates almost a sense of relief, kind of like letting out that breath you didn't realize you were holding in. I 
found this section really hard. Beethoven wants a crescendo here, and it feels like we're reaching a climax, but then he changes it to piano. It's not only technically challenging to execute, but what are his intentions for doing this? To me, it kind of feels like surrender. There's frustration building up, like the crescendo, but you surrender to it and accept that it's out of your control. The end of this piece is a delicate balance between the right and left hands. There are two melodies played simultaneously that can sound like they're fighting each other if not balanced correctly. Almost as if Beethoven's right brain and left brain, emotional side and logical side, were competing for dominance. Okay, I'm gonna end the video here before it gets way too long. I'm pretty happy with how things are shaping up. I just have to put everything together and practice the piece as a whole. If you'd like to see the final results, let me know in the comments and I can make a separate video about it. To be honest, I've been procrastinating on videos because I still don't know how to make these more interesting or entertaining, both to make and to watch. I thought it would be interesting or informative to show the music learning process, but I realized watching someone practice is very boring. Watching the footage of myself practice is even more boring. The reality of practicing is I'm just repeating things a million times, and who really wants to watch that? If you guys have any suggestions or other kinds of video ideas, please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.